In the previous videos of this playlist, we've been discussing nerve glides for the major nerves of the upper extremity. So we saw nerve glides for the median nerve, ulnar nerve, and the radial nerve. We're going to switch gears now and start discussing some nerve glides for the nerves of the lower extremity. And we're going to begin by looking at those of the sciatic nerve. You should consider giving a sciatic nerve glide to any patient that comes in with any of these presentations down here. Number one, adverse neurodynamics of the sciatic nerve. Now, in the upper extremity, we had specific special tests called upper limb tension tests. And when those were positive, it implied some kind of adverse neurodynamics of that specific nerve. Well, here we do not have lower limb tension tests, but we do have certain special tests that give us good information, like the straight leg raise test, braggart sign. When these tests and similar ones are positive, it can imply adverse neurodynamics of the sciatic nerve for which you should give this nerve glide. Number two, numbness or paresthesia, such as tingling, burning, shooting pain in the sciatic nerve distribution of the lower extremity. Number three, sciatic nerve entrapment, and the most common site of that entrapment is the piriformis muscle. Recall that the sciatic nerve runs directly below the piriformis muscle but still in contact with it in the vast majority of individuals. And then in a smaller percentage, it actually pierces through the piriformis muscle belly on its way down through the leg. In either case, if the piriformis is tight or spasming, it can cause entrapment of that sciatic nerve leading to neurodynamic hypomobility. Number four, lumbosacral radiculopathies. And then finally, don't overlook inflexibility. So for example, if you have somebody here in standing that can't bend down and touch their toes while keeping their knees straight unless they actually give in a little bit and bend their knees, or you have somebody that can't do the same in long sitting, people often toss it up to, well, they've got tight hamstrings and that's why they're inflexible. Well, oftentimes the hamstrings are not tight. And if you do a hamstrings at 90-90 test or another kind of hamstring length test and it's negative, well then a good bet is actually that the sciatic nerve is actually not moving very well. And so you would need a sciatic nerve glide to help it move better. And then oftentimes after that, the person is able to touch their toes in either position here. Now there are two forms of the sciatic nerve glide that I use clinically. This is the first and the less intense of the two. So generally, I always start with this one because if the patient has high irritability, I don't want to bring their pain up and then have it just stay there for the rest of the session. So it's always better to start off conservatively with the least intense one. The patient can do this one either in sitting or hook line, but I generally always give it in the sitting position because really then they can do it anywhere. The patient will begin in seated with one knee, it's going to be my right one, completely extended. And once it's extended, I'm also going to point the feet away, so plantar flexed, the ankle. So knee extension and ankle plantar flexion. This is position one. Now from here, you're going to allow the knee to flex downward and at the same time dorsiflex the ankle. So here, letting it down into knee flexion and also ankle dorsiflexion. This is position two. And so to do this sciatic nerve glide, you're just going to oscillate between the two positions, knee extension plantar flexion, knee flexion dorsiflexion, knee extension plantar flexion, knee flexion dorsiflexion. Again, you're going to hold about one to two seconds in each position, maybe to a total of 15 repetitions per set. Now, you can progress this by doing it in some degree of cervical flexion. Okay? So the movements at the knee and the ankle are exactly the same, but notice I have my neck flexed downward. This puts a little bit of extra tension on the nervous system, and so what we're essentially doing here is we're training the mobility of that sciatic nerve under a greater degree of neural tension. I can progress this even further by adding a thoracic slump. So recall from the slump test that both cervical flexion and this thoracic kyphosis or hyperkyphosis puts even greater tension on the nervous system. So this would generally be the last progression I would use. 
The first form of the sciatic nerve glide, what we just looked at, is the least intense of the two. If the patient has trouble tolerating that one, there's no way I'm going to progress them to this one, the second form of the sciatic nerve glide. But if the patient can tolerate the first one and they actually find it pretty easy, well, I want to challenge their nervous system, so I'll then see if they can handle this one. So this one the patient's going to perform in sitting, as you see right here. And you're going to begin with one knee completely extended like this. So extend the knee. This is position one. Now from here, you're going to allow the knee to flex downward and at the same time bend your neck downward into cervical flexion like that. This is position two. Now notice that as I flex my neck downward, I'm doing my best to not flex at the thoracic spine. So I'm literally just having knee flexion and cervical flexion. And again, it's a nerve glide, so we're just going to oscillate between these two positions. Knee extension with the head in neutral, and knee flexion with the neck flexed. Again, we're going to hold about one to two seconds in each position, and perform a total of 15 repetitions per set. Now, if this becomes too easy, we want to challenge the patient a little bit more, well, then I'm also going to include some thoracic flexion in there. So again, position one, there's no difference. Head's in neutral, so neutral neck, knee extension. But then position two then becomes combination of knee flexion, cervical flexion, and then also thoracic flexion, or we can say thoracic hyperkyphosis. Remember that thoracic hyperkyphosis puts extra tension on the nervous system, so again, we're retraining that neurodynamic mobility of the sciatic nerve under a larger amount of neural tension. And again, an oscillation between those two positions. And as always, we're going to use the test-treat-retest model. So if the problem bending down and touching the toes was not a hamstring tightness problem, but instead was sciatic nerve hypomobility, then we should see a change in this mobility following the sciatic nerve glide. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.